Look at the little fang. Baofeng UV-5R Mini. You've probably seen some videos about this. I'm not the first one to do it, but I wanted to make a video about it because I bought mine. I bought it. I've heard several people say, in fact, I saw a comment on one person's video, and I honestly don't remember who this was. Maybe T.O. Maybe T.O. brought this up. I can't remember right now. I saw a comment on one person's video that said, did Baofeng send out test units to all the YouTubers that were a higher quality than what they're selling on their website? And, and the reply was, you know, that's a good question. There's no way to really tell. Not sure. It's possible. But who knows? But guess what? I didn't get sent a test unit. They didn't contact me to send me a test unit. And that's okay. I don't, I don't really care. I've got a direct line to Baofeng. I email them about questions sometimes. And they're very responsive. Directly to Baofeng. Very responsive. So this is the UV5R Mini. I bought this on Amazon. I bought this directly on Amazon. I will share a link to the Amazon purchase in the description below. Because if you guys use that, I'll earn a qualifying commission. Because I am an Amazon associate. Alright, first off. I want to show you the size comparison. So this is obviously the Baofeng Mini here in the middle. This is a Waxon UV9 Papa X-Ray from Better Safe Radio right there. And this is the Radtel 880G, which that, that radio is bigger than most radios anyway. That's a, that's a larger HT than most of your HTs are anyway. So there's the UV5R Mini. Just size comparison. Most people know what size this Waxon is. And this is larger, obviously. This is a lot smaller. I really like the size of this thing. And quite frankly, I was worried that it was going to be a, a poor performer. Now, the thing I've always heard about Baofengs is that when you get a Baofeng, the first thing you do is you take this antenna right here and you throw it in the trash. And then you put a real antenna on it, such as a signal stick or a ZBM2 antenna. Something, or maybe a Nagoya antenna, something like that. I have not done that yet. I have found that this antenna seems to work okay. Maybe Baofeng finally got the message and they're like, well, we're going to add a, a better antenna to, to some of our newer radios. The radio that was the most popular for the throwaway of the antenna was the original UV5R. And there's been about 27 renditions of the UV5R since then. And this is the latest rendition. So perhaps they fixed it. All I know is that when I key up my local repeater here, it actually works pretty well. Okay, so that's the 442.900 ULIS repeater. KC5 HWB testing. And that's the uh, that's the ULIS repeater right there. This right here is my... And another thing, it's dual PTT. A and B right there, you can see. So I can select the top and the bottom band with the AB button right there. But if I wanted to key up the bottom band, I just hit the B PTT button. And it keys that band right there. Now, I have noticed that if you don't have that band selected, then for whatever reason, you can't hear it. Like right there, KC5 HWB. That's my all-star node in the truck right there. But if I switch it back to that, I can key that one but you don't hear anything until you come back to it. Now, that's probably a setting in the menu that I haven't messed with. I haven't gotten that far into it yet, so perhaps that's easily... Um, there's your flashlight. P perhaps that's easily fixed, but anyway, that's what I've... But, you know, and anyway, switch back and forth. It's probably not on dual watch right now, and that's probably why that is. So... There's an FM broadcast radio. Okay, so you can, that's what that button is right there. Standard Kenwood K connector on the side over there. And the best part about it, I think, USB C programming on the battery. So all of that is part of the UV5R Mini. Now, the screen here in the menu system look a lot like a lot of the later Chinese radios look. I think the UV21, the UV24, I think it was, the UV17R. Uh, several of your Radtel radios, uh, a couple of your Quanchang radios have this very similar menu in them. So this seems to be the new and improved, easy to set up menu that most of the Chinese programmings are using nowadays. I think that most likely they're all made either in conjunction with the same factory or by the same factory. I don't know. They're all made in China. They're all very similar. And Baofeng's one of the main brands you 
see coming out of China, but are they made in the Baofeng factory or elsewhere? I don't know. I don't know what the Baofeng usually has stuff out before everyone else does. So today we're going to put this on the meter. I'm going to put it on this tiny essay right here. Bring this down here. Turn this on. Put that on the tiny essay. And also we're going to go over here to the radio cam. And I am going to put it on the radio cam and see what kind of power out we get from that HT. Now, today's video is sponsored by Mezzi and Poloni Coax out of Italy. You can always save a 10% discount on everything in their store at the link in the description below at the Gigaparts website. Coupon code of HR2Cables will get you 10% off of all Mezzi and Poloni Coax. Connectors, adapters, tools, items, everything you want for your coax needs inside the shack, inside the truck, and elsewhere. Shop Mezzi and Ploni at the link in the description below. And be sure to tell them that Ham Radio 2.0 sent you. So let's hook this up real quick. Two-meter calling frequency here. And then we're going to set up our tiny SA accordingly. So we're going to go in here to measure... Harmonic, 146.52 megahertz. Enter it again. Okay, and then we're going to go back into level. Or, uh, yeah, level. And we're going to go to EXT gain minus 40 times 1. Okay, and now we're going to key up right here. We're going to see what it does. Oops. Okay, I'm on an offset, so let's go fix that real quick. going to change the direction to none that's going to there we go okay now there it goes right there that's a pretty clean signal for a fang right there okay it's got a second of harmonic that's down here at the negative 35 range that's not bad that's a pretty darn clean signal for a fang first harmonics right at zero which is pretty much where it should be and that second harmonic doesn't hardly move. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Now we're going to do... No. No, it won't even go to 220. Okay, I didn't think it would. I wanted to check. Okay, now to 440. So we're going to change this over here. We're going to key up 440. Right there. Okay. Okay, it's got an eighth harmonic up here around the negative 25 range, so it's a little bit dirty. Little bit. Not bad. Not bad at all. That's a little bit. Got a little bit of harmonic up here, but all this down here looks really good. First harmonic, plus 10. That means it's probably transmitting a little bit higher power on 440 on the 440 band than it is the two meter band. No, that's okay. That's good for a Baofeng radio. That's really, really good. Okay, so far I'm I'm impressed. I'm impressed with that. I am not surprised really that it sounds that good on the repeater. I mean, I've I've used it and it sounds good on the repeater. I get I get good response from the repeater on it, and now I'm not so surprised. So let's put it on the meter to see what it's doing over here. All right, we were already on the 440 band, so we're going to stay on 446.0. And we're going to key this up here. Okay, so 4 watts on 440 on high power. We'll go back to the 2 meter band there and key that up. And 3.5 watts. So 3.5 watts on high power on, on 2 meters and about 4 watts on high power on 440. Which is not surprising that it's doing more on the 440 band than the 2 meter band because the harmonics were a little bit higher 
on 440 than it was on two meters. So three and a half, four watts, something like that. Test results might vary a little bit. Sometimes I get comments like, well, I tested it on my meter and I was getting five watts. I was getting six watts or I was not getting as much as you were getting, something like that. What you have to remember is, first of all, all the meters kind of have a variance in there. They're not all exactly the same. And second of all, a lot of the times, the quality control at some of these factories is less than ideal, okay? So if I get, especially with like a Radtel or a TID radio or something like that, if I get one of those radios and it's off by half the power or twice the power from what you're getting, it's probably a quality control issue in the factory where the radio was built, okay? Does it work? Sure. Can you communicate with it? Absolutely, you know. But overall, I've been pretty happy with this UV5R. I was this mini version of the UV5R. KC5 HWB testing. And I have thought it was a pretty good radio. I was uh, pleasantly surprised about how well it worked and how well it sounded both on the transmit and receive audio. So check out the link in the description below. I will share once again my Amazon link to this because I was not sent this radio. Not a sponsored ad at all. Sponsored the videos Mezzi and Plony Coax, which is the coax we just used on the testing meter. So check out the link in the description below. Let me know if you have one of these UV5R minis, what you think about it. Which one did you get? They come in different colors also, and there is a clear one. The clear one's more expensive than the rest of them. I just got the black one because I just wanted to make a video with it. It's the only reason I bought it was to make a video with it. So which one do you have? How do you like it? What do you think about it? Put a comment below. We'll catch you next time.